Climate change is not only a threat, it is above all an opportunity to create a healthier, greener and cleaner planet which will benefit all of us. We must seize this opportunity. We can achieve a win-win in both ecological conservation and high-quality development. Fighting climate change calls for innovation, cooperation and willpower to make the changes that the world needs. We need to walk the talk. If we do this together, we can do this. When I say climate change, what do you think of? I think of jobs. Green jobs. Green jobs. We must find a smooth transition towards a low carbon economy. There is no planet B. There is no planet blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. This is not about some expensive, politically correct, green act of bunny-hugging or blah, blah, blah. Build back better, blah, blah, blah. Green economy, blah, blah, blah. Net zero by 25, 2050, blah, blah, blah. Net zero by 2050, blah, blah, blah. Net zero, blah, blah, blah. Climate neutral, blah, blah, blah. This is all we hear from our so-called leaders. Words, words that sound great, but so far has led to no action. Our hopes and dreams drown in their empty words and promises. Of course, we need constructive dialogue, but they've now had 30 years of blah, 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 and where has that led us? Over 50% of all our CO2 emissions have occurred since 1990 and a third since 2005. All this while the media is reporting on what the leaders say that they are going to do instead of what they are actually doing. And then not holding leaders accountable for their action or rather inaction. And don't get me wrong, we can still do this. Change is not only possible, but urgently necessary, but not if we go on like today. They say they want solutions, but you cannot solve a crisis that you don't, do not fully understand. You cannot balance a budget if you do not count all the numbers. And as long as we ignore equity and historic emissions, and as long as we don't include consumption of imported goods, burning of biomass, etc., etc., and as long as clever accounting is one of the most efficient ways of reducing emissions. We won't get anywhere. And the climate crisis is, of course, only a symptom of a much larger crisis. A sustainability crisis, a social crisis, a crisis of inequality that dates back to colonialism and beyond. A crisis based on the idea that some people are worth more than others and therefore have the right to exploit and steal other people's land and resources. And it is very naive to believe that we can solve this crisis without confronting the roots of it. Right now, we are still very much speeding in the wrong direction. 2021 is currently projected to experience the second highest emission rise ever only about 2% of government recovery spendings have been allocated to clean energy measures. And according to a new report by the UN, global emissions are expected to rise by 16% by 2030 compared to 2010 levels. Our leaders' intentional lack of action is a betrayal towards all present and future generations. The people in power cannot claim that they are trying because they are clearly not, as they continue opening up brand new coal mines, oil fields and pipelines, pretending to have ambitious climate policies while granting new oil licenses, exploring enormous future oil fields, and shamelessly congratulating themselves while still failing to come up with even the bare minimum and long overdue funding to help the most vulnerable countries deal with the impacts of the climate crisis. If this is what they consider to be climate action, then we don't want it. 
They invite cherry-picked young people to meetings like this to pretend that they are listening to us. But they are not. They are clearly not listening to us. And they never have. Just look at the numbers. Look at the statistics. The emissions are still rising. The science doesn't lie. But, of course, we can still turn this around. It is entirely possible. It will take drastic annual emission cuts, unlike anything the world has ever seen. And as we don't have the technological solutions that alone can deliver anything close to that, that means we will have to change. We can no longer let the people in power decide what is politically possible or not. We can no longer let the people in power decide what hope is. Hope is not passive. Hope is not blah, blah, blah. Hope is telling the truth. Hope is taking action. And hope always comes from the people. And we, and we the people, we want a safe future. We want real climate action and we want climate justice. Did you hear me? What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! The leaders like to say, we can do this. They obviously don't mean it, but we do. We can do this. I'm absolutely convinced that we can. But it starts with the people. It starts with facing the reality of the situation as uncomfortable as it may be. It starts with taking action, and it starts now. Again, what do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! Thank you.